Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash android. And by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. Welcome to All About Android, episode 24, recorded on Friday, September 2nd, 2011. This is your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Eileen Rivera. I'm Jason Owl. He's back! Yeah, and then know, we don't have Ron. Not, I'm still but not we, stranded. Thanks. I'm stranded. Yay. <laughs> Thank God. I'm stranded. I know. <laughs> that would be depressing if I was still stranded. <laughs> yeah, that would. That would have been like five days. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, I'm not. I mean, like Grass lost. Valley's a great place, but thankfully, I'm still not there. <laughs> Everything's okay. I'm all good. <laughs> well, welcome back. Ron is out this week uh, recording a special episode of his uh, iFanboy, and he apologizes for not making uh, this episode. But we have Aaron Newcomb of Floss. Back. Back again. And the Source Second podcast. week in a row. <laughs> See, this is the joke we're having is that once we've got you, you're going to have to come back immediately. Yeah, it's like we lure you in initially. We're like, hey, you want to be on the show this yeah, one time? Yeah, and then it's back. like, you know, we take advantage every single week. We're like, no, you got to do it again. <laughs> so this is like two weeks in a row. Nicole had three weeks in a row. Who's going to win? She's got hey, the record you right know, now. The but... record of the best or longest guest starring yeah. on All About Android. I'm gunning for it. I'm gunning for it. Three weeks in a row. I'm going to go four weeks. Four weeks in a row. Oh, my God. Regardless, we really appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Anytime. Glad to join you guys. Especially back to back. So. Yeah. Well, this week uh, is another feedback and Q&A episode. And uh, we also have a ton of hardware news thanks to uh, Aoife. And, uh, like, and there's also more about the upcoming Amazon tablet, which I'm obsessed about. Uh, plus, we have a grab bag of apps. Um, a What would we call your app? Is a tool and two games. Yeah, right? a tool and two games. So it would be an interesting <laughs> Android Who's gonna win? Arena. <laughs> Although your app is really fantastic, Jason. So um, Well, your games are fantastic, too. See? Oh, thank See you. See what I did there? Yay. <laughs> We're all winners. Hey, uh, before we get started with our feedback, I just wanted to uh, show a little video. Um, for those of you who don't know, there were two Nexus S phones that went up into space with the Atlantis, the STS-1. Uh, 135 mission. Uh, Chad, let's go ahead and play a little bit of that video. Over a lot of the menial tasks that astronauts do. Our first goal for our project is to have ground controllers driving the sphere around on the space station. The sphere will take data and pictures and sensor readings and send that back to the user. She hooks it to the front and at that point the phone will be able to tell the sphere where it needs to go. The processor, the camera, and all of the sensors that are in the Nexus S become the brains of the robot and tell the, the sphere where it wants to fly. The Wi-Fi on the phone connects to the station Wi-Fi. That gets linked down to the ground, and then hopefully we're going to be able to control it from the ground. We chose the Nexus S because the phone is very easy to take apart. Android is easy to program. We're familiar with it, and we needed to make a lot of customizations that are easier to make with Android. Google was also working on an open source data logger, and it met our use case requirements. You can download this application for your Android device, and that is the exact same application as what NASA is using. The more time that the astronauts can spend doing science, uh, the more value we're getting out of that investment. Our goal is to provide enough value to crew, and enough value to operations that they'll be able to keep it up there for a long time. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling. Very cool. So did you download this app? I haven't yet. Uh, the app is called Sensor Data Logger from Cellbots. Uh, it's free right now in the Android marketplace. And uh, I'm anxious to kind of 
you know, sensor see what it's data about. Sensor data logging application for Android. Gathering measurements from all available sensors while recording video and taking time-lapse pictures. That's awesome. I now, did they, is this something that they built when, because I know they sent the Nexus S up into near-Earth orbit in a balloon, right? That yeah. was like one of the first things they did. Is this... You guys know, is this something that they wrote for, for that and then just adapted it for I don't NASA? know, but it seems like it's possible. Yeah, they're just using, I mean, I think it's awesome that they're just basically using an off-the-shelf application. I mean, think about, you know, back in the day, if they were to build this themselves. They would have to create the hardware. Yeah, and, exactly. It'd be yeah, millions absolutely. of dollars and all this stuff, all this time it would take them. And now they can just say, ah, just give me a cell phone and uh, yeah, I'll take that application there. <laughs> it looks good. App. Yeah, cool. I mean, there's enough sensors in these phones for this absolutely. To, to absolutely, obviously be very possible. It's cool that you can kind of download it because, I mean, I'm trying to think about it right now and kind of figure out like what I would really use it for. But I I'm know. sure people are going to come up with some really cool uh, uses for this app. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of a little disappointed that they're not using the... Um, uh, the, what was it, the Star Trek uh, tricorder or whatever? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, because that basically has all that functionality right. too. How cool would it have been if they actually used that app in space? <laughs> you know, and they're interfacing with it. And I don't know. Maybe it's just the geek in That's me coming That's the future, out. man. That's like next year. Yeah. Next year, they'll next be doing year. that. They gotta next get 2012 is where it's at. Um, yeah, that was just an excuse for me to get some space into the uh, episode. Actually, we'll have a little bit at our uh, outro video as well. Yeah. Uh, should we uh, go ahead and dig into feedback? Yeah, we're just going to go right into feedback. As we said, this is, uh, you know, this is every once in a while we like to have an episode that's filled mostly with your feedback, although this, this episode, as you said, we've got a lot of hardware news to kind of talk about as well. But we're still going to jam in as much feedback as we can. We might as well start off with a voicemail. You can send us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Stuart uh, called in uh, requesting kind of a basic feature that I would agree with him. Android probably should have. Go for it, Stuart. Cliff Mechanic in San Diego, and I have one question. I want to be able to put a shortcut to a file on a folder or a desktop instead of opening up the app to open up the file. And I have not seen that. Thanks for the show. Bye. So what he's asking for is to be able to actually send a, uh, to create a shortcut that goes directly to a file so that, mm -hmm. for instance, if you wanted to launch right into playing a song or something like that, probably more useful would be something like a PDF file or whatever. Yeah. Instead of opening up the app uh, and then f navigating to the PDF or opening it through the app specifically, be able to actually create a shortcut on your, uh, on your home screen that launches that immediately. And I kind of looked into it Android OS doesn't specifically have the ability to do this right out of the out of the gate, which kind of seems weird to me because you have mm -hmm. that whole uh, context screen of shortcuts. If you long press on the home screen, kind of seems like it would fit into that perfectly. But there are a few uh, apps that allow you to do this: Linda File Manager, ES Bookmark Manager, and one app that I've had on, installed on my phone for I mean almost as long as I've had the phone is called Astro. It's an Astro mm -hmm. File Manager, and I'll actually mm -hmm. show you on my phone here. If you long press on the desktop and you hit shortcuts, if you this is if you have Astro installed, there's a little Astro shortcut that's down here. Click that, and that'll pull up. What what do you know? It pulled up a music <laughs> file. I must have prepared no for this. Um, so you can go ahead and click that and enter a name for it so that it shows up on your desktop with a specific name. Hit OK. And uh, you can actually change the icon if you want to as well. And boom, I've got an icon down there. Although I think I have my Launcher Pro set to hide icon names, so that's why you're not seeing the icon name there. But basically from there, I can just launch it, and it opens it up, and it plays a pretty cool song. So um, that's is just that kind of a... Is that the song from Portland? Uh, it is. Uh, wait. Portlandia. Portlandia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's the one, right? I heard good. it in like two. Yeah, yeah. Two that's, notes. that's that's a good call. <laughs> Although I, I I loved that song before I heard it on Portlandia, and then I heard it on Portlandia, I was like, God, I didn't know anybody knew this band. It's kind of washed <laughs> out. Uh, anyway, so it is totally possible. Uh, Stuart, check it out. Astro does this, and you can find it in the market, and it's free. Yep, and also I use uh, ES File Explorer, oh, okay. which also does it. I just checked while you were explaining that. I just checked, and ES File Explorer does it as well, right plus on. a couple other options. Um, and ES File Explorer does LAN browsing as well. So um, oh, okay. that's why I use that, is because it does a really good job of browsing um, SIF shares on your network. So, mm. Oh, nice. Yeah, bonus. So, so then it sounds like file managers, yeah, in general, uh, managers, kind of yeah. are, are building this functionality. It just kind of seems like a no-brainer. Like, why yeah, right. isn't it part of the Android OS? Yeah, it's they just a shortcut shortcuts. anyway. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 
But anyways, there you go. Great. Um, I guess, oh, I guess I'm, I'm next here. <laughs> Continuing on the uh, route of what Android probably should have. Our wish uh, list. Something around yeah. it. Yeah, this right. is like our wish it list is. segment. Alex from the UK writes in and says, I've been using Android for six months on my HTC Desire S, having dished the iPhone, largely happy. But one thing's been bugging me lately. I've got plenty of apps installed, many of which offer a share via function. And these come up in, this, in the menu. So when you go you know, to share something, share via and it pulls up the whole list of things that you can share. Unfortunately, this list is getting rather long and I only ever choose three options, Facebook, Gmail, or Dropbox. It's made worse by Facebook appearing twice as well as the Facebook HTC Sense app it comes with the phone. I don't know if this can be uninstalled as it came built into the phone. Anyway, in short, I want to be able to edit the share via menu and I can't find anything helpful. And I, let's see here, I know that I can do this as well. Uh, I mean, take to... a shot of my um, screen really quick. Look at all of that. That's oh, just... See, that's interesting, though, because I'm looking at yours, and it's actually, I mean, it's, yes, it's hard to read. It's very hard to read. But you see everything, at least. It's yeah. all, like, in a box. Yeah, well, this is Go Launcher Pro, um, but it's just, yeah, I would love to edit that. I don't as well. It, at the same time, I kind of, it's like, oh, if I did want to go to Plixi, which I never use, I'm going to uninstall that pretty soon. Nice to have. But, but there yeah. are definite I icons in there that you probably never, ever use. Right. Oh, right? never. Like, All you share, never share. So I you can at least that. trim it down to be somewhat yeah. manageable. If you take a look at my screen, I have uh, just this, this twit, uh, <laughs> twit pick, not twit pick, but t from our studio pick. Uh, and if I do share, I get the menu that extends off the top of the yep. screen. It, so I actually can't go up there. It stops at messaging. <laughs> oh, so actually, this strange. might be a Samsung... Yeah, thing. I'm Actually, thinking not, that. Actually, not the um, Launcher Pro thing, so for me. Um, so, I mean, I, there's nothing that I can do. If I have too many apps that share via, I'm just kind of stuck with this window that pops off the screen and anything above messaging, whatever that may be. I don't yeah, even know what it is. Uh, I can never access. Mm -hmm. So, this just seems like, a, you know, if, I, <laughs> if anyone actually has the ability to do something about <laughs> this, it seems like something to fix in a, in a future update. I tried to search for apps that would help you kind of pare this down. There's nothing that I could find. Yeah, I, I looked too. I couldn't find anything either. I mean, there's some developer tools, but, mm -hmm. who, you know, nobody wants to go yeah. <laughs> no. develop their, their, a, a problem, hopefully. I mean, some developers do, but otherwise you don't want to do that. So Maybe a developer um, will. Yeah, now. this would be a good, I mean, it sounds like this would be a good either addition to an existing app or mm -hmm. a brand new app just to deal with this problem. Totally. All right, moving on to the next email. Hey, Android Cruise. First off, I love your show and a longtime listener and first time writer. I'm having a problem or a concern about e readers. I have a lot of ebooks like PDF and um, CHM, dot CHM. Which application do you guys recommend for reader that saves progress for both formats? That's the key. He that wants key. both, and that's the issue here because I had a hard time trying to figure that out. Thanks in advance, G. Uh, at first, I thought my app, uh, Al Aldeco, uh, which is a great e-reader app, actually. Chad, you can go to my screen really quick. Uh, Aldico, A-L-D-I-K-O 2.0. Uh, it has a great uh, sort of library with shelves. Uh, wonderful store. If I go to the store really quick, um, I mean, they have everything. Look at that little scroll at the top. I, I love the look. I love the UI. And um, it does support a ton of formats, but it doesn't uh, support .chm, as far as I know. And I did a little survey on uh, G plus for that. But uh, let, let me, let's see if I have a book here to look at, last read, White Fang. So anyways, it's a very, it's a very, very good e-reader and a ton of people love, 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 love this app. Yeah, this um, is a But it one. just doesn't do both things that G needs. Mm -hmm. um, and. I have a couple of recommendations, but you have one too. Well, I mean, I was just kind of poking around trying to find a single app that took care of both of these things, and, and I couldn't find one either. But I did run across an app called HY Reader, mm -hmm. uh, all one word, and it does EPUB, CHM, TXT, UMD, HTML, but it doesn't do PDF as far as I can tell from, yeah. from uh, mm. the Android market entry here. So so I don't know if there is one uh, ebook reading app to rule them all that, well, that covers both of these. Um, what some people uh, are doing are, co are converting their um, .chm files to a PDF. 
It's such a pain in the butt to have to you convert have to. beforehand, no. though. Especially if other apps in the marketplace can read yeah. CHM. You'd think one of the dominant, uh, you know, developer developers of the dominant apps would build that functionality in. Why not? I'm staring at the chat room to see if anybody has I one know. that. <laughs> I looked a lot and I couldn't find one that did both. I mean, yeah. that's the key. There are many apps that do either mm -hmm. um, or support like PDF and other, you know, e-reader formats, but not necessarily .chm. So, mm -hmm. boo. Um, just to piggyback on that, I do, you know. Um, one app that does support .chm is called Moon Plus Reader, and I really like this app. And um, look, you can highlight with different colors. And this is just me with a UI thing, but I love the page turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. I love slick. this page turn. So um, this is just another app to check out called Moon Plus Reader. Um, just throwing that out there and they've got really a good store as well. Yeah. So uh, I guess if anybody has um, a, a recommendation that we've over we've overlooked that could help G let us know that we can so we can email him but I didn't see one that did both. Yeah. So it seems like another good opportunity for an existing app or someone that wants yeah. to create to, a new app to yeah. do that. Yeah, I wonder seems if it like would be pretty easy to add in because it's a standard based, it's based right. on HTML, I think. So it's a standard format that should be easy to add in. One of do these you, apps should just do it. Yeah, do you know, do, does either of you happen to know what CHM is as a file format? Like where, so where is Windows, it? Windows, I looked it up. Compressed HTML? Or oh, compiled okay. HTML, I think. Oh, actually. Yes, okay. and it's usually with... Um, uh, in a database if you're looking for help files and I tried okay. to I tried actually finding one of those files to download yeah. to try in here and I it took me yeah, forever. Right. Yeah, Windows, Windows help, help files. files Thank yep. you. That's oh, okay. what I thought it was. Okay. Yep. Interesting. All right. Great. Uh, and some people need those. Yep. So All right. Well I've got an email uh, now from um, Hom Humberto Valencia, I believe is his name. It says hello AAA crew. I want to get my mom a new phone since she's due for an upgrade on T-Mobile. She's not new. She's not new to Android since she has a G1, but I think she needs something better. Yes, she does. Yeah. <laughs> um, <there's> <laughs> considering her needs, texting, phone calls, occasional browsing, uh, picture taking. I was looking at some inexpensive models like the Samsung Galaxy Smart, uh, uh, sorry, Gravity Smart, or the LG Optimus T, but I don't know which one of the two to go for. Uh, she doesn't need a powerhouse phone, uh, but she says she'd like to have a physical keyboard. I'm still hesitating on which of the phones I'd, uh, I mentioned would be great, uh, since both have the same specs. I do want her to have something that she'll at least be comfortable with. Besides those I mentioned, do you guys know of any other options? She's looking not to spend a lot on a phone, and she usually keeps them for a while, so durability is also in the equation. Hope you guys can answer my question and keep it up with the show. It's one of the best in caps Yay. out there thanks smiley Why, face thank you so uh there's a few options and i actually just went through this recently with my wife oh you did oh good yeah so i, I was like oh great i love this question <laughs> um and she was on t-mobile and she had a basic flip phone flip flip phone flip, 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 flip phone, flip flip phone. phone. Flip flip phone. uh and she wanted to go you know step up to a smartphone mm -hmm. uh, and so there's a few options let me go through those on t-mobile first so on t-mobile there's a few options you can try uh one is the my touch 4g there's a my touch 3 and now there's a MyTouch 4G. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right now the, there's a version of the MyTouch 4G that if you get it online, it's free with a contract. So since you said you were upgrading, I'm assuming you're at that point in your contract where you can upgrade. It might be something to consider. Um, that does have a slide out keyboard. There's also the Sidekick 4G, which actually gets better reviews, at least on the T-Mobile side. I noticed that. So the Sidekick 4G might be an option. And that'll last for a while because 4G should be supported for you know, the near future, at least, at least the next few years. So, um, mom, mom has to be cool with rocking a sidekick. Though. Exactly, exactly. That <laughs> one's a little bit more stylish. A little more bit. Hip. The keyboard is always kind of the strong suit about the sidekick. But sidekick's. the keyboard is excellent, exactly. And there's also one more I found, which is the Motorola Click 2, which also has a slide out keyboard. You can check that one out as well. It's a little bit older. It's running Froyo. It's free, mm. I believe. Mm -hmm. You know, mm. but, you know, it, it might be an option. The other thing that I would suggest is actually if you're at the point in your contract where your contract is actually up, not just to upgrade, but actually your two-year agreement's up, you may want to, you know, get off the contract cycle and just get your own phone mm -hmm. off of Craigslist or... I guess eBay, I don't know, I usually use Craigslist. Get your own phone. That's what I did for my wife. I got her, um, she actually switched from T-Mobile to Virgin Mobile mm -hmm. and ah. got the Samsung, uh, now I'm going to, it's not the Infuse, it's the, um, 
Atrix? No. No. No, I'm, I'm going to forget it. Uh, I'll look it up in just a second. But anyway, um, she got a, you know, it's a kind of a, it's a slider phone. It's, um, um, Intercept. Intercept. Thank you. Mm. I knew you'd come up with it. The Samsung Intercept. Um, and I think I got that for 80 bucks on Craigslist. So, and I don't have to worry about contracts. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so she's paying 25 bucks a month. She gets unlimited, um, texting and data and 400 minutes a month. So Mm -hmm. it really works for her. So might be something to check out if you're at that point in your contract, like I said, that you can get out of it. Yeah, my automatic inclination with all these things is to always end up being like, well, you want the biggest, baddest phone, just because that's where my, where my mind is. But, you know, know, these other lower end phones aren't necessarily, that isn't necessarily a bad thing, and especially yeah. to a lot of people. They just don't push their phones in the way that, right. that we do. Yeah. Uh, so some of these phones, and I mean, you know, I kind of laughed a little bit with the sidekick, but I mean, it's free. It's 4G. Yep. Uh, why not? It's got a great keyboard, you know, so there's definitely a few options. There. Yeah, exactly. there's a big uh, Labor Day. Uh, weekend sale at uh, T-Mobile. So if you're listening... uh, Right now. Humberto. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, maybe you may not want to be locked into a contract. Maybe she doesn't want to. So I think that's a great idea if you don't want to be locked into a contract is to just get that phone on eBay. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, we've got a couple of listener tips. And uh, this one comes from Mike who says, Greetings all about Android team. Have you ever blasted your eardrums because you forgot you left the volume turned up before you plugged in your headphones? Ouch. I stumbled upon an app named Hearing Saver that will automatically adjust the volume when headphones are plugged in. It's free ad free i like that open source and seems to work perfectly on my nexus s love the show we like to give tips like that every once in a while Mm -hmm. from you know so so it's not just send us a video send us an email send us you know a voicemail whatever because you guys have great tips out there as well so thank you very much mike and that uh, app again is called hearing saver awesome edition pro absolutely and it's free yeah, it looks like it has uh, more than just, uh, it has configurations around more than just that as well. It's just kind of a full-on mm-hmm. volume management system, so mm-hmm. that's great. And I can uh, do that in my, um, since if you're running a you know, rooted version of your phone, you're running CyanogenMod, yes. yep. you can do it there as well. So And you have independent kind of volume uh, exactly. adjustments Exactly, independent for volume controls, things. you can break everything out and, yeah. and, and stuff like that. So it's another way to go. Yep. Absolutely. It's a great app though. Uh, Another listener tip from Dr. Bowser in Bountiful, Utah. I found the screen timeout widget to be very useful. It is available for free in the Android market. I've noticed that while you're doing demos, your screens will darken. This widget easily fixes the problem. It is also very useful when showing photos to friends. Thanks for all the information. Um, And I actually, I, I downloaded it before today's show. I've been using it all day. If you take my screen here, uh, it's this little button with a phone and a little snoozy uh, Z's <laughs> coming out of it. I've said I can't remember what the uh, what the timeout times are, but basically off is what you're currently at. If I hit it once, screen timeout set to one minute. Hit it again, screen timeout set to five minutes. Hit it again, it's full on screen timeout set to ten minutes. And you can make those adjustments however you want. You could set those three stages in whatever way you want. It's easy to look at the widget and kind of know, depending on how lit up it is, where you're at. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's super, super uh, useful. I've I've been using it all day. So thanks for the the recommendation, Dr. Bowser. Yeah, I'll definitely be checking that out because I know I have trouble with my phone. Some apps on my phone, um, and maybe you guys have experienced this, they they work okay, especially streaming apps. Mm -hmm. They work okay, and then when your, if your screen times out and mm-hmm. turns off, they stop. Mm-hmm. And I think the NPR app was like that for a while, um, but they fixed that. But So that's really useful. I'll definitely be checking that out. And I mean, yet again, there are a number of different ways that you could probably yeah. do this type sure. of thing. Um, actually, you uh, have an app later Drew Cipher. <laughs> well, yes, I do have an app later that will allow you to I'm do things like this. I'm just teasing for Jason. <laughs> <laughs> but Drew Cipher in the chat room uh, mentions that feature is in Cyanogemod and the yep. no- notification power bar. Right. I mean, just to kind of go back to Cyanogemod, it does a lot of really cool things. That's why it's really cool. So a lot of these things are kind of built in under the hood. This is a way to do it without that. Uh, Someone just asked, what is that app again? It's called Screen Timeout Widget. Yes. I believe it's free, right? It is free. Absolutely. Okay, well, I have a little hardware review here, but I want to read this email first. Um, I was supposed to do this review in the last episode, but we just didn't have time. So um, this uh, email is uh, from Tony at iSting, who says, I was up in the air between the T-Mobile G2X and the HTC Sensation 4G. Eileen, you wanted an update? Well, here it is. I decided to go with the HTC Sensation 4G after watching episode 19. It is a great phone, and I received the 2.3.4 update the very next morning after activating my phone. 
Mm -hmm. This was a long-awaited update. Anyone who, <laughs> anyone who survives two years with the T-Mobile MyTouch 3G deserves some type of award or extra discount. Uh, well, Tony, I guess that's you. And um, I have just a little quick review of the phone myself. All right, well, it's got uh, HTC Sense 3.0. You'll see the familiar ring, and you'll see how zippy this phone uh, opens up, and you can uh, carousel it around to see all the various widgets that I've got here. Uh, 1.2 gigahertz dual-core Qualcomm Snapdragon processor, which makes it run really well, and you'll see this 4.3 diagonal um, QHD display. Uh, the biggest thing is uh, their camera, which I think... Um, is uh, is pretty cool because it uh, it shoots at 1080p and it has an 8 megapixel rear camera with dual LED flash and there's a VGA front facing camera as well. Uh, one thing you'd really like to note is probably battery life and I have to say standby mode I got a pretty cool 10 hours on standby with this phone. Um, used it one day and uh, unplugged the phone at around 9 a.m. and didn't have to plug it back in for another 12 hours. And that was moderate use. Of course, if you're streaming Netflix or streaming RDO or you know, make, using it heavily, you might want to plug this um, phone back in. But after uh, uploading 2.3.4 to this phone, I have to say battery life has been really, really decent. Um, Netflix looks great. Uh, some of the gaming looks great. Uh, very easy to use, very easy. I love H, uh, Sense 3.0. I'm really digging the various widgets that you've got here, the friend stream, the weather, the email, you name it. Um, I'm actually really, really impressed with this phone. So uh, it's available right now at uh, T-Mobile. As you know, there's going to be tons of phones coming out pretty soon, and maybe this phone will get... Um, discounted. But if you're a T-Mobile user, you might want to check out the HTC Sensation 4G. Quite a phone that uh, packs in a lot of punch. And uh, the only con that I really had, other than the fact that there's a ton of really great phones that are coming out to the market pretty soon, uh, is that the RAM is, what, 768? And mm. I download a ton of stuff. And they're, you know, they're pitching this as the multimedia super phone for T-Mobile, HTC. Well, I want to download a lot yeah. of stuff. I want room mm -hmm. for a lot of this multimedia stuff. And that's the one con. And um, it seems like everybody, uh, and I did a little survey on G+, everybody who has the phone loves it. Um, but I think it's just running up against some really hot phones that are going to be released very, very, very soon, like literally days. Yeah. Um, but yes. if you're a T-Mobile customer, again, I'm thinking maybe it'll be updated. Now we're looking, uh, for those of you who are watching the video, we're looking at HTC Sense 3.5. I kind of like HTC. This is my first phone yeah, that I Yeah, well, use I was with curious HTC to Sense. hear what you thought about Sense. Do you like it? Um, well, uh, yeah, I played around with uh, Sense 3 and had uh, had a, a Sense 3 ROM on my Thunderbolt for quite a while. I don't anymore, but, it, but I really went back and forth uh, mm -hmm. between uh, Vanilla bad. and Sense 3. There's just a lot of really cool usability uh, kind of splat you know there's a lot of splashiness to it yeah but it's all very usable exactly. um, a lot of it is very usable some of it i didn't quite use so much some of the, the widgets and stuff yeah. are really pretty and everything but exactly. it's just you know they occupied too much space for me it was yeah. like your entire screen or nothing you know <laughs> exactly. and that right. kind of stuff i wasn't too fond of but the lock screen I was super lock awesome screen. i love that um and i mean you know three three 3.5 sense is like the only uh, overlay that i get somewhat excited about and yeah. interested in. Yeah, absolutely. It seems to be the only one where they're not just, well, I shouldn't say this, there's functionality in all of them, but mm -hmm. I think a lot of them are really concentrating on what can we add in. They don't yeah. care whether it's going to get in your way or not. It's just like, what, right. can, what kind of widgets can we put there um, that'll make you want to come back to Samsung or come back to whoever? Um, but yeah, HTC Sense, it really seems to be very usable, mm -hmm. pretty, and it seems, to, I, mean, I don't really see a lot of negative feedback on forums and things about it. So Yeah, me neither. So it's kind of exciting to see mm -hmm. possibly 3.5 uh, coming up. And just a footnote, uh, it's possible that HTC might be working on a Sensation Special Edition with Beats. 1.5 gigahertz. We talked about Beats a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I just saw this uh, come up on my uh, on my feed and I thought, oh, okay. Not that we're sure what exactly is going to be the greatest feature with the Beats, but, um, yeah. you know. I'm, I'm really curious to know, like, what that ends up meaning. <laughs> I don't know what I that means. I still have no idea. No. I mean, it's it seems like right with now. HP, I think, was the one who was doing a lot of Beats stuff, right, mm -hmm. at, at some point. And it's like, it just seems to be a marketing 
marketing gimmick more than anything. But totally. I don't know. I'm sure the chat room will let us know if there's some super cool thing about Beats that nobody else does. I'm sure they'll. A Let Beats Equalizer app, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which actually I shouldn't I shouldn't totally diss because sometimes I feel like these phones need I, better equalization, yeah, yeah equalization and low. volume adjustments, yeah. adjustability. With that, it's time for our real hardware section. Hey, guess what got announced on Tuesday? Uh, what? This phone. Oh, this that phone. thing you've had for like this thing that I've had a month for or two, or? Yeah, like two months. <laughs> uh, so the Samsung Galaxy S2 is going to finally land here in America for Sprint, T-Mobile, and AT&T. We talked about it in the last episode. Not coming to Verizon because I think we kind of know why. Um, but uh, each carrier is doing something a little bit different. AT&T is going to call it the Samsung Galaxy S2. It will have the 4.3-inch screen that I have, the uh, same as the European version. Uh, and NFC support, which I actually don't have on my phone. Mm. Uh, T-Mobile has not named theirs yet, and uh, Sprint is calling theirs the Epic 4G, and Sprint will get theirs first on September 16th, and both of those, T-Mobile and Sprint versions, are going to be a 4.5-inch display. It's a little bit bigger than this. Now, wait a minute. Isn't Sprint actually calling it the Samsung Galaxy S2 uh, Epic, Epic 4G? 4G? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about most confusing name for a device ever. Yeah. But if you just shorten it to Epic 4G, I guess that makes better. But there's already an Epic 4G, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, there, there, there was, yeah. 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 So. That's, that's why it's very confusing. confusing. That's confusing. why I guess they're going to say Samsung Galaxy S2. It's so yeah. long. No, yeah, it's it's it is long. really long. I, I don't long. understand that. Why, um, will you miss NFC? Do you wish you had NFC in yours? Uh, you know, I still have the Nexus S, and um, again, I'm very disappointed that, you know, most of the uh, NFC. Um, applications are available for the Sprint users. This is the T-Mobile yeah. um, yeah, uh, phone. So I haven't really ever experienced it fully, so I don't really miss it. Maybe mm -hmm. I will um, as soon as really cool stuff happens. That's the thing. Happens, stuff has you know? to be developed for it. I mean, Absolutely. I just sold my Sprint version, uh, uh, Nexus S4G oh, today. Oh, you did? Yes, you gone. sold it today? Wow. I sold it. But, you know, but that is, I mean, they've been using that stuff over in Asia for forever. I know. And it just hasn't caught on yet here, probably because we're so spread out in well, the United States. It's just like States, texting. It took yeah, forever. Exactly. Did you ever use the NFC not at anywhere, all. any of these nope. retail locations nope, with Google Wallet? All. No. Wow. Nothing. All right. I mean, I really didn't come across it. I didn't see it. It wasn't right. like right in front of my face. And I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. So. I mean, until it starts to become more popular and, and actually has applications developed for it and it's out yep. in the marketplace, mm -hmm. um, I don't think people are obviously going to be using it. But hopefully they'll start including it in more and more phones because yeah. it is a cool feature. Yeah. Well, as you all know, I do recommend this phone. So those of you who go out and get it in whatever carrier, I think you're going to be pleased. Just saying. Cool. Yeah, I know. I, I, I look <laughs> at that phone and it just, it's so it's like sleek light. and slender and, and light. And yeah. Yep. I'm going nice. back and forth between that and the Nexus Prime. So yeah. it's which, tough, we haven't seen. which we haven't which we seen. Haven't seen. <laughs> to, it could I mean, be a brick phone. This one's supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to be available, I think, September 16th, right? Right, for Sprint. And then, you know, there's been rumors that the Nexus Prime was going to be out in October. I mm know. -hmm. Or some versions of it. So now I'm really torn. It's like, well, do I just wait another month and maybe get the phone? But, you know, based on Jason's experience, <laughs> maybe I should just go. You can wait forever, dude. Maybe yeah. I should just get <laughs> it. it. Never ends. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and, and of course, Verizon <laughs> isn't getting the Nexus Prime, right. they're getting the Droid Prime. So right. um, I don't even know if it's worth it. Well, yes, it is worth it for me to wait at this point. <laughs> I, I'm addicted sandwich, to yeah. waiting, I think. <laughs> but there's too much right around the corner. I know. Anyways, uh, so speaking of Samsung at the uh, IFA Technology Trade Show in Berlin, there were, there were a lot of announcements. Another uh, interesting thing that came out of that is the Galaxy Note which is a 5.3-inch <laughs> display. It has a built-in stylus, uh, which they call the S Pen. Uh, it has custom S Pen apps for like things like note-taking. They really kind of emphasize the fact that it's large enough and the stylus is included to make it uh, like really usable on the go, to make it really, really usable in, in ways that maybe you're your tiny little wimpy phone isn't. Uh, <laughs> but 5.3 inches in a handset, I'm really curious to kind of hold one of these things and see if it's too big. Um, 4.3 doesn't scare me. 4.5 doesn't scare me. 5.3, I reserve judgment until I actually have it in my hand. But it does uh, come out with Android 2.3, plus TouchWiz, obviously. It's LTE, uh, HSPA+, a 1280 by 800 Super AMOLED display. I love um, Super AMOLED. 
<laughs> yeah, do you think you like it more than uh, QHD? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, QHD mm. didn't. I mean, when I compared my phone next to that HTC Sensation, you no way. Pixels. My yeah, my yeah. my phone rocked it. That's what but. I hear a lot about the QHD. Uh, dual eight megapixel and two megapixel cameras, removable twenty uh, twenty five hundred. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> I realized after I pasted this in here, I don't really know what to say there. A big battery. Yeah, big battery. <laughs> Almost sounds like a meh battery, but it's not. Uh, and Samsung made dual core 1.4 gigahertz processor. And I'm waiting for someone in the chat room to correct me and tell me what MAH stands for. I think for. it's milliamp hours. There we go. See, this is 4.3. This is yeah. not, it's, it's actually, I'm getting used to it. But mm -hmm. when I was thinking, I was watching the video that Chad just showed and 5.3, I'm like, my hand, I, I don't, I don't, it's too big for me. I like Five the whole. Big. Yeah, I like the whole idea. No, I actually not. like the stylus. I'm actually into that. That that would be kind of handy, uh, f especially for something that big. But yeah. um, I'm already going to say no to this for me personally. But really? I did a uh, little survey on G Plus and lots of positive comments on there. Lots yeah. of you know, lots of you guys out there with big hands are like, yeah, I love this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, we've talked about this before, um, not on the show, but mm -hmm. another things. I love a bigger display. I mean, mm -hmm. I would like to have a tablet that has a phone in it. You know, not just mm -hmm. data connectivity, but an actual phone, and then just ditch my phone. And maybe something like the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7. .7. Oh! If that had a phone, nice I, I would uh, <laughs> I'd really appreciate it. It doesn't, though, but it was announced this week, and actually, um, it looks pretty cool. We talked last week about the uh, the 8.9, 8 the Samsung Galaxy Tab 8.9, <laughs> right. the weird middle of the road the uh, tablet, and this week Samsung announced the 7.7. .7 looks pretty cool. It's actually a dual core 1.4 gigahertz CPU. It's running uh, Android 3.2 at this point out of the box. And we've seen a lot of tablets, I've seen a lot of tablets running 3.1. This one's actually 3.2 and it's HSPA plus. So it looks really good. I mean, you mentioned Super AMOLED. This one has a 1280 by 800 Super AMOLED screen. So it should look fantastic for viewing movies or playing games that are, um, you know, have the resolution actually that high. And I'll talk about a game that does have that resolution oh, yeah. later on. Um, um, but it but it looks really cool. I mean, it's um, uh, you know it's got sixty. It'll support either between sixteen and sixty four gig of internal storage. So it actually has a card slot. If you're watching the video, that's what they're showing right now. There's a card slot that you can insert your own nice. memory, which is that's really great. good. Yeah, I, I wish um, that's that the, key. Uh, the, the ten point one had that. <laughs> Actually, exactly. today was the perfect example. I have a video <laughs> that I was trying to get off of it for this show, and I could not for the life of me because it was just too large to like send over Wi-Fi. The download, the upload kept canceling. Right, that right. would have been. So I think that's a really cool feature. Also, the thinness of it. Um, again, oh, um, this is why great. you need to watch the video mm -hmm. of the show. I'm just displaying it right now. It's actually um, uh, extremely thin. I'm just looking to see if it says. It's, it's, it's as thin as the 10.1. Yeah, it, at least. It, it's right. very thin. It doesn't really say here how thin it is, but it does say it's 0.74 pounds. So it's very light, very thin, a beautiful display. Um, too bad we can't get it here in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so right? I guess that's confirmed at this point. Well, the, the, there know. was a rep that basically uh, a Samsung spokesperson, I believe at IFA, told uh, Xavier Lenier, the author of this article, uh, that it would not be coming to the U.S. They have no plans to bring it to the U.S. Bummer. I Let's go to we'll Europe and go buy one. <laughs> it's really hot overseas. And, I'm going to go uh, to Europe now whenever that comes out. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're holding well, their cards close to their chest. I don't know. You know, what, what could stop you from getting one of these, I mean, from ordering from one yeah. of these and having it shipped over? It's just Wi-Fi. True. Right? So well, that's what I did with this phone. Anyways. Yeah. That's right. what I did with this phone. So yeah. Yeah. maybe we could get or it. You, or you have, you know, uh, tethering on your phone and that's how you... How mm -hmm. you get to? Yeah. The, I mean, you know, it, it should should work. So yeah, um, should be. Uh, it's too bad. I mean, hopefully that's not true, but it looks like it is for now, anyway. Um, the other really cool piece of technology that was announced was the Sony Ericsson um, Xperia Arc S, uh, mm. and uh, they always have the best names. And so, uh, <laughs> so we're gonna have a video of that. But it looks like this is a pretty cool handset as well. If you like the Sony Ericsson um, Xperia line. Uh, the Xperia 10 and so forth when those came out. This looks very, very similar to that. Um, it's kind of a refresh of the original one that was announced earlier this year. And um, this one actually has a 1.4 gigahertz Qualcomm processor in it. I'm not sure if it's dual core. I think it's single core. No, um, 8.1 megapixel camera. Um, uh, it has an Exmor R sensor 
which does something with 3D. They're calling it a 3D uh, sweep pan panorama mode. So you can take oh, a cool. 2D image 3D. and then convert it into 3D. So how, how, I don't know I'm what the, just trying to figure that out. I have no idea what that means. I, I, I don't either. And I'm not sure what the <laughs> fascination is with 3D lately. Everything is, yeah. you know, 3D explosion with TVs and everything else. So, yeah. you know, I'm not really sure how much how excited I am about that feature, but it seems to be the real differentiator here mm -hmm. in the phone is that they have this 3D capability. So, um, so I don't know. We'll see. The display looks really, really good too. And, uh, you know, it's another contender. Something yeah. to consider. Absolutely. Uh, Sony actually had a lot of stuff that they announced, but they one did. of the other kind of I thought, you know, reasonably interesting things was the uh, the, the revival of the Sony Walkman. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, entertainment. Cool. So it's a mobile <laughs> entertainment player. So it's not a phone. It is a Sony Walkman. It's a 4.3-inch device, gingerbread, HDMI out. has this ability where you can throw media. They call it throwing uh, media, which is better than squirting, I might add. <laughs> uh, throwing media to a compatible Sony device. So like Sony oh. Bravia TVs, if you wanted to send a song and stream it from your device oh, to okay. the TV, you could do that. Um, but, you know, it's just kind of the the continuing of the life of the Walkman, the brand that never seems to go away. And I don't know. There's a part of my heart that's always kind of warmed by that. But will I get one? Probably not. Yeah. I, I have no reason to have a media player device anymore. Right. Yeah. Just do all of that it's through my phone. phone. Yep. Either phone or your tablet. One or the yeah. Other. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if, I mean, hope, hopefully someday if they really want to go this route and make a really kick kick-ass uh, music player with the Walkman name, you know, maybe they add, include that into the phone functionality and it can be both. Right. Well, this is, it wouldn't be the first time. I mean, they did this with, you know, before smartphones, mm -hmm. they did this with their other, uh, you know, old style phones. I don't know what you want to call them, but, yeah. um, you know, pre-smartphones, they had a couple Sony Ericsson phones that came out with the Walkman brand and that was their thing. I mean, it was a music player and a phone. And back then it was really cool because there was no smartphones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, back then it was like, oh, this is awesome. Wow, it does so much. Right. And yeah. now that everybody, well, not everybody, now that a lot of people have smartphones, it's like, what's the big deal? Sure. So. Totally. All right. Well, this just in today, <laughs> I'm obsessed with this. News. You guys know I'm obsessed with the Amazon tablet, the possibility of it. And apparently it's real. MG Siegler of TechCrunch uh, has seen it and has played with it. That guy sees a lot of things. I know he I does. Know. And I saw his photos that he was in Seattle. I'm like, why is he in Seattle? Oh, I wonder. And then I see the article the this articles. afternoon thinking, wow. So he says that it's a seven inch tablet. They're not going to release a 10.1 until possibly Q1 of next year. And it's a capacitive um, touch screen, multi touch, um, two finger multi touch. Price, 250 very competitive to the Nook. Um, and he's saying that, uh, and I'm putting, I'm just reading what he's written. As anticipated, Amazon has forked, forked Android to build their own version for the Kindle. My husband, Tom Merritt, predicted that last week. Uh, simply Yay. put, it looks nothing like the Android you're used to seeing. Kind of similar uh, to what Barnes & Noble did with their Nook. Right? Kind of, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. exactly what they yep. did. Uh, Google's Android market is nowhere to be found, he says, and they are not working with Google at all all what do we think hmm. what do we think i mean they're going to sell a lot of these period 250 done yeah. amazon done it's, if it's going to have you know everything that we, we talked about we in talked the about last episode bit. of mm -hmm. just you know having access to the store you know ha i'm really curious about the music player and the and the uh, video player because i buy a lot of video and music i mean the music is probably not so much but i'm, I'm curious about the video player because i want to watch my tv shows mm -hmm. that i purchase on the tablet um do we care that the Google market is not there? I mean, I feel like something's going to happen. Something's going to hack in and we'll be able to I mean, yeah, there, th but... there will be a hack eventually. Yeah. But yeah, I care when the Google market isn't there because that's like, that's the market. That's the mm -hmm. one that has everything mm -hmm. you know, for the most part that, that you might want to have access to. The Amazon App Store is good for certain things, but, but not all. I mean, not yeah. all. You don't, you don't really have everything. It's the whole manicured App Store versus the free open market, the difference. And yeah, mm -hmm. I would miss the Google market. I think it's interesting that they bundle this with an Amazon Prime account. Mm, I mean, yeah. they, really what they did here is they did what they needed to do. If they were going to do yeah. a tablet uh, that was a Kindle tablet, they have all of their Amazon services. They needed to build it around that. So I, obviously this is the way that they have to go. 250 is super competitive yeah. for a price point for what they're offering with it. Absolutely. Well, they also say, well, MG also says that it will only have six gigs of internal storage because they want to use it more like a cloud device. Like a device. cloud device, yeah. Uh, 250 is still, I mean, 
Hmm. I don't know. I just... Um, well, it makes a lot of sense now. I mean, I've been wondering why they've been making all these Android apps, like the music player, the cloud music mm -hmm. player, yeah. and the mm -hmm. store, and all this stuff. And I'm like, the MP3 store. So it all kind of makes sense. I mean, this is this must be something that they've been planning for a while oh, yeah. uh, to come out with something like this. And the 250 price point, I don't know. I, I think if they, I think I'd rather, you know, 199 would be better for me. Mm -hmm. But you know, since they're bundling it with a Prime account. I mean, that's worth something right there. Yeah. So yeah, that's it, worth 80 bucks a year. I mean, right now it looks like it's going to be the same price as the Nook, unless the Nook, um, you know, goes down. I think it's 250, right? And the Nook so, is still very popular. It's the only mm -hmm. thing that's keeping Barnes and Noble afloat right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I think you know you bundle in all this stuff. Eh, if you really love Amazon. Why sure. not? Or even if you don't, even if you're just a generic consumer, I think that the Amazon brand carries Absolutely. a lot more with it a lot of times than the Google brand or, um, you know, some other brand. I think that the Amazon brand is really strong, and I'm sure yeah. that's what they're betting on here. Absolutely. Well, and not only is the Amazon brand really strong, the Kindle brand is very strong mm -hmm. for right. what it offers. Yeah. I find it interesting that they, base, according to MG, they are going to call it the Amazon Kindle. Me too. And so Me too. what does that mean for the e-ink Kindle? Like right. that's yeah. the Kindles. You know, they, they have to differentiate the two, I would imagine, by name in some yeah. way, shape, or form. Maybe they, they don't have to, but it's a little confusing. It makes it makes me guess, although I don't believe it, you know, is e-ink going away? Yeah. I don't no. think they give up that, that bread and butter. No, I think that's I think they're still gonna have that Kindle e ink, but you know, they're they're moving into a different territory now with this new yeah. uh, tablet Kindle. You're Seems like a lot of people are saying in the chat room they're going to pass. They're not sure. Um, well, you know, it's know. not it's not a full on tablet either. When you think about mm -hmm. what we're used to getting in tablets, it doesn't have a camera. You know, right. there, there right. are certain things that it doesn't have, so it's kind of limited in the same way that the Barnes and Noble Nook is. Even if you root the Barnes and Noble Nook, it's like a an ebook reader that's been modified to be a yes. tablet and does a lot of the things, but not all the things. Right. This kind of seems like the same type of thing here. So yeah. I don't know if it's apples to apples comparing it to something like you know the iPad or the Galaxy Tab. 10.1 they're kind of playing different roles yep i agree yeah. even though they run the same os so um awesome well that's a lot of hardware i know <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stuff happened this week I so, know, exactly you know. <laughs> uh well we might as well take a quick break and thank our sponsors this episode of all about android is brought to you by audible.com audible is a leading provider of audiobooks with more than 75,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature fiction non-fiction periodicals they've got it all for listeners of this show, for listeners of All About Android, Audible is offering a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out their service. So you can try out their service. One audiobook you might consider downloading is one that I have queued up. I don't have a credit right now. I, I, you know, I spent my credit for this last wow. uh, month, so I'm waiting for another one. It's Ghost in the Wires, uh, My Adventures as the World's Most Wanted Hacker by Kevin Mitnick, who is, I mean, he's, he's kind of legendary in his status as uh, one of the most elusive computer breaking artists out there. Um, and it's kind of his story, and it's on Audible um, right now. It, the book came out, I think, a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it was immediately on Audible as a downloadable audiobook. So I'm waiting for my credit because I really I've been waiting for this book and I can't wait to listen to it. Yeah, and the uh, Audible.com actually they have an Android app. Um, if you haven't downloaded it yet, it's free. I've got some of my books here. The latest one that I'm going to start reading is The Art of Racing in the Rain. It's a dog centric book. If you like dogs, <laughs> it's if kind you of you like dogs. If you love like dogs. You the Art of Racing in the Rain. <laughs> but uh, it, it's in. Uh, the dog's point of view. This, oh, uh, yeah, this, uh, um, see, this book. That could either life. be really cool or, or not. Well, I got, <laughs> yeah, right. there was a lot of uh, oh, what's this five butt? star sniff, ratings. Sniff, sniff. I know there was a lot of five star ratings for this, so I'm, I'm, I'm I think it'll be okay. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to diss your book. I know you dissed my book, man. Um, but yeah, the, the app. You know, you can shop. With the app, it'll lead you to the Audible store. Um, you know, you could check your stats, how often you've been uh, yeah, listening. The There's some news, people. too. They update you through audible.com. It's a really, really good Sleep timer? App. Did you say sleep timer? I didn't say the sleep yeah, timer. Yeah, that's what I, I use. Do you? Mm -hmm. I love the sleep timer because otherwise oh. I fall asleep. I did this the other night. I, I was listening to uh, this book uh, that actually I'm listening to now, Ready Player One by Ernest Klein, read by oh, Will okay. Wheaton. 
Oh, okay. um, nice. It's a very, very nice book. That. In fact, yeah, I'll just put that right, right over there. here. There we go. <laughs> um, so Ready Player One, uh, like I said, it's read by Will Wheaton, and he actually reads it a little bit better than I thought he would. Um, <laughs> I like Will Wheaton. I just didn't know he could, like, do multiple voices and, okay. and that. So sorry, <laughs> sorry, Will, if you're listening. Um, but, yeah, I was listening. I listened to these books at night, and uh, so without the sleep timer, I ended up, like, I didn't set it the other night, and I ended up four hours into the book. Oh. And I woke up, and I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And so, anyway, uh, definitely a, a good application, though, and highly recommend Ready Player One. You should check it out. I am going to cue that up. Is it, so is this a novel, or is it a is yeah, it it's fiction? A, or? It, it's a novel. It's fiction. It just came out, and oh, um, wow. basically it's about, it's, it's a completely geek book. So yeah. it, uh, real quick, it's about uh, Easter eggs. And so this guy oh, fun. Um, you know, develops this Easter egg, and everyone has, it's a real-life Easter egg, mm -hmm. and he's left his fortune, and everyone has to go, everyone's trying to find the, the Easter egg and unlock the keys and get into the room and all this stuff. So Oh, cool. Cool. Very, very cool. It's very fun. I will add that to my gigantic list of books that I'm actually waiting to listen to oh, right here's now. I went through and went on a total rampage, and uh, I think I'm good for at least two years now. <laughs> oh, wow. So. I was looking for the sleep button, and uh, Chad, you could take my phone. It's right there once you uh, launch the book. There's the sleep button there. Sleep yeah, you just hit settings. settings, hit the settings or the menu key, and... That's great. Yep. Nice. Well, that's a, a lot of books to check out if you haven't been to Audible before. You'll get and one of them free. And definitely check out the app. You can get one of those free. To download any of those for free um, or another of your choice, you know, we're not limiting you to just these books that we've talked about. Uh, go to audiblepodcast.com slash android. Pretty easy to remember. Audiblepodcast.com slash Android. Check out a free audiobook, and I think you'll really dig it. I'm loving audiobooks. I'm totally addicted now, so check it out. I have three credits right now, and I need to purchase one before it, um, you know, you only get three. And no. Then, and then, uh, well, at least in the gold plan, you get three, and then if you don't get one, then you don't get your... Like, I wouldn't get the fourth. Uh -huh. I lose the month, so I have to choose another no, one. Oh, do it. Keep There's, up plenty. With... There's plenty. Gotta do it. Uh, all right, well, back to feedback. And uh, this next email is from Adam Colby, who says, Hi, AAA crew. Thank you for putting on such a great show for the Android enthusiast. After your root episode, I rooted my Evo 4G and installed a custom ROM nice. and kernel. Now, on to my question. My 21-month-old 20 uh, son has shown a great interest in both my wife's and I's Evo 4Gs. Though it is nice to see the interest, he tends to help a little too much with playing mm. Plants vs. Zombies or insists we need to watch videos on YouTube. <laughs> we would like to buy an iPod Touch an iPod Touch-like Android device to call his own. We love Android and have invested in apps in the app ecosystem. The device needs to have Wi-Fi, cannot make calls, and does not need much storage space. What options exist? Is buying an unlocked phone an option? I worry about my son making phone calls. Can an unlocked phone without a SIM card make any calls? I am also looking at a cost of under $200. Any suggestions will be appreciated. Well, we were just talking about IFA. We were just talking about um, all the new hardware announcements out there, and while this is not confirmed for the U.S., there is a Sam, there is a Galaxy S Wi-Fi uh, 3.6 that is the quote unquote iPod Touch for Android. Uh, we just don't know when we're going to get it, uh, and it's around 200 bucks. This to me would be the ideal uh, solution for you, um, but since that is not quite coming out yet. I'm going to suggest possibly the new Lenovo tablet for 200 buckaroonies. Uh, it's a low cost and really, really um, skinny uh, tablet. And uh, it'll run Android 2.3 gingerbread. And it has a front and back facing camera, Wi-Fi connectivity, offline GPS. You know, there's no phone in this. Um, and that should be coming out fairly soon. Uh, and that seems to um, hit your price point. I I think it would be fun to play Plants vs. Zombies on this thing. Yeah, uh, all the games and watching YouTube on this device. It's seven, uh, da, 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 what did I say? How big is the screen? Um, well, it's a seven inch tablet. So um, I don't big know. Enough. Big yeah, enough. Big enough for big Plants vs. Zombies. And actually, to go back to what we were talking about earlier, the it, there is no availability and pricing on the Walkman, but that would be a perfect uh, that too. opportunity You're right. for something like that as well. Right, and there's other there's other things available. There's some cheap ones that you can get. They're on the knockoffs, either Chinese versions or whatever. Um, 
I know I saw these the other day on bigboxstore.com. I have no idea if this is a reputable site or anything, but they've got it. <laughs> they, I, it caught my attention because there was that a lot Aaron, of, I know, I, I know. I ordered from trouble. that site and, and now they I've got, stole my, I stole my money. money. Bigboxstore.com. Um, <laughs> but but there's, right there's a bunch of these, you know, Android tablets that, you know, they probably don't have the best screens or whatever, but for a kid, exactly. this would be perfect. And totally. some of these are, you know, 100 bucks, 50 bucks, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so definitely check these out. And my prediction is um, that I mentioned this on forecast that these types of uh, tablets are going to be coming down in cost towards the Christmas time frame. Mm. So over the, you know, when, once, once we get to November, yeah, I think you'll be seeing a lot more of these knockoffs in the store as people are trying to, trying to bump up their profits around Christmas time. Oh, totally, totally. Uh, cool. All right, moving on. We have Antonio from Atlanta, Georgia, who's also Tech Ace Zero One in the chat room. Says, "I work around a lot of machines, so I use my phone as a music player. I also need to use Bluetooth headphones because I broke three Trio 650s uh, with wired headphones. The stock music player on the G2 worked great, except when I get a call. But that's another email. The problem I'm actually having is, no matter what music or video app I use, if I turn my Bluetooth headset on, I have to go into the music app." To activate the headset. Is there a way to put the stock Google Music Player on the sensation? Sense Music Player won't read my artist right. When I back out, force closes. Um, so, so he kind of goes on, but basically he's tried multiple music players and hasn't found one that solves this problem of the show. Um, and I mean, yes, you can install the stock music app. In fact, Google rolled this out when they did their music beta um, launch and you can go anyone can go into the Android market and download the stock music app music beta by Google which is kind of the new stock music app going forward I actually did send this to Antonio earlier because I was trying to kind of get a little clarification and mention this to him and uh, he wrote back right back and said hey again I installed the music beta from the link so far it's working yay so it fixed his problem Good. he said except for no Netflix no matter what I turn uh, no matter if I turn the headset off or on it stops the app but it didn't do this on the G2. But my main issue has been solved. So there we go. Awesome. Music stock, stock music app uh, will fix that problem. All right. Okay, uh, next email is from Henry in Boston. Hey guys, I love the show. Have not missed an episode yet, even the betas. Quick question. I have heard Eileen talk about the Unlock Galaxy S2 that she imported. I heard you say you uh, use Go Launcher X, which I do. Is the European version not vanilla Android? And if so, why then use a third party launcher? Uh, and if it is skinned, as you say in the business, why not wait and get one of the US versions rather than spend all that money, not to mention the shipping charges? Keep up and uh, keep up the awesome work. And Jason, pick a phone already. <laughs> do it when I feel like. <laughs> uh, Henry, no, it's not vanilla Android, and um, it has TouchWiz all over it. Um, so that's why I'm using Go Launcher X, which I really, really love. And why not wait and get one of the U.S. versions? Because I couldn't wait anymore. I've been borrowing Leo's um, Nexus S, and I had to pay full price no matter what because I lost my phone. Um, and so I went ahead and just got the phone that I really wanted. Uh, it was a little bit more expensive, but now I have an unlocked phone when I go anywhere overseas and um, I'm, I didn't have to re-up my contract. So I'm ticking the time down when um, my, this is the SIM that's in here is my iPhone SIM. So I'm ticking the time down when the contract ends mm -hmm. and goodbye right. on, uh, you know, to your contract for me. It's, um, it's, it's worth asking the question though, because um, this kind of touches a little bit on that. When you're buying a phone that isn't vanilla, um, and you can just install a launcher on there. Like, is that good enough for most people? You know, like we're, yeah. we're always talking about how it's got to be vanilla this and vanilla that and everything. But then when we get a vanilla phone, you know, we end up customizing it anyway. A lot of times, this I have Launcher Pro on mine, so it really doesn't matter if it has, uh, exactly. you know, uh, Moto Blur or Touch Wiz, and I don't like that because. I would probably just put Launcher Pro on there anyways. Exactly. Does it really matter? Yep. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, no. Well, it does. I mean, there's bloatware. There, there's that's, always like that's why. Yeah, apps yeah. that they load on. But. but even though I have some of that bloatware and now I'm running um, Go Launcher X, I don't see it. <laughs> it's, you know, it's very customizable. Uh, mm -hmm. And I... And, and it, there's a couple apps here. I'm like, mm, maybe I might use every once in a Some while. Some launchers but. actually allow you to hide app icons if you don't yeah. want an app to show up. So it's like it's still on your phone, but you're not seeing it. So it's kind of like, who cares? You right. know, yeah. If you've got enough memory not, in your phone, it doesn't matter. As long as it's not running in the background, yes, taking up cycles. There's that too. That's, that's the thing I hate. So Absolutely. Yep. Well, thank you for listening, Henry. Yeah. All right. So I've got another email now. Um, this is from, I'm not sure if these are initials or what, M-A-U. Yeah. So I, 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 don't I don't know. know. I don't, I'm not sure. But anyway... 
Mao. Um, <laughs> uh, he says, is there an Android app for Google Talk that can do pop-up in a similar way like Go SMS when a new message arrives. I've searched Android mar Market. I don't think there is one. I'm not from the U.S., so I don't have access to Amazon's, Amazon's, Amazon's Android Market. So there's maybe an app there that I don't know that can do that. And, of course, you guys are the experts here. Wow, thanks. Uh, <laughs> so maybe you could let me know if there is one. And he says, hey, more power to you. Uh, love your show. I'm very glad that I accidentally listened. Accidentally? Well, we're glad too. Uh, just just by watching two shows, my girl already thinks that I'm an Android apps expert. How cool is that? Hey. Yeah. So you know, all, right. all about cool Android. Whatever we can do to help. All about Android. It's good for your love life. Yeah, there you go. Um, so actually, title. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Interestingly, interestingly enough, the Google Talk app actually allows you to do this already. It's just buried in the settings. Mm -hmm. If you go to settings, notifications, pop-up alert, and actually I'll try to do that. Yeah, I actually you. have one on mine. Oh, um, do you? Yeah, Chad, if you take my screen, I just sent it from my email. And, and what go. do you know? Jason uh, sent me a message. This popped up over my desktop, you and it says, hi, you are tall. <laughs> and to which I would reply, yes. So there we go. So there you go. Uh, it's just yes, kind of buried. It does buried. pop up, and uh, it's pretty cool. Yep. Luckily for you, it's just kind of buried. You may want to update yeah. your applications, though, because you may have an old version of Gtalk. There's been several floating around, especially since 2.3.4 came out, because that's the one that supports uh, video if you have a front-facing camera on your phone. Mm -hmm. So uh, you may just want to look and see if you have a upgrade. You need to upgrade that application, perhaps, to get that feature. Yeah. Yeah, it very well could be that. Uh, moving on, Terry from Ontario, Canada writes in and says, Love the show. I've learned so much from you guys. You folks uh, are great. Uh, you, you <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys are really out. great. Uh, Anyways. <laughs> I, sometimes I edit these so that I can just get to the question. Uh, I am looking for a good I am app. Do you guys have any recommendations as to what would be a good choice? I've tried a few, and none have been really been that very good. Also, maybe on a future show, you could cover browsers. Uh, which is interesting oh. email because oh that's gosh. what we're doing next week. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> that was totally unplanned, but <laughs> strangely that fits. Um, so I am apps. I don't really use I am on my phone. What about you guys? I use Google Talk and okay. that's about it. So when I love the fact that if someone's trying to reach me via Google Talk that it just, you know, pops yeah. up on the notification bar at the top of my phone and that seems to be enough. Do you ever have to launch Google Talk for it to be running uh, for you? Because I feel no. like, like I never I never go to the icon and launch it, but um, I don't know if me not having done that means that I won't see a chat. No, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't, something. there must be a, there must be a setting, but I yeah, see it all the time. You, you can turn it on, um, but I, I see it all the time. So if some of huh. you just go into chat, da, 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 on your computer, um, I'll see it on my phone, which I love. Interesting. So okay. I don't miss it because I've seen that a couple times now. I'm, I have Chrome everywhere. I've yeah. got in multiple uh, computers, and so I'll see it on my phone, on that computer, and that computer. And that so it pops. That's, that was going to be my question because I don't have anyone that usually communicates on GTalk. Mm -hmm. I mean, does it pop up on all the yeah. all the devices simultaneously? Yep. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I don't miss it unless I don't have it launched. Right. Okay. But but I, I don't have it launched on my phone, and it'll come up. It and comes if, up anyway. Like if I don't have my phone around, then oops, you know, sorry, I missed your message. But mm -hmm. right. um, yeah, it. it tends I, to come up no matter what. Yeah, I just don't me. know if it would for me or not because I've, I've never used that app. Uh, it is worth mentioning though, other IM uh, clients, Mebo is one that collects you to, or connects you to multiple IM clients, right. uh, uh, services in one client. And then also Trillion, which I used yep. on PC, yep. Cut forever, a and there's an ago. Android app for that as well, which I haven't used on Android. But uh, it looks like uh, Drew Cipher in the chat room is a fan. So Trillion is by far the greatest. It uses C2 DM for notifications, so it uses low battery. That was one of the free Amazon apps month back or whatever. So oh, was it? Yep, I have I it on my phone. You know, I don't miss many days on the free Amazon app, but usually <laughs> I find out the ones that I did miss. I'd be like, dang, I would have got that one. <laughs> oh, well. Um, Anyway, so that is that. Cool. Well, let's uh, get to uh, just a really quick uh, mention, uh, Netflix.com slash twit. We've talked about them a lot on the show <laughs> and on the Twit Network. Everybody has Netflix, but we are huge fans of Netflix and their instant streaming service. You can go on uh, onto the website and stream, but you can also do it from just a number of different places. Your Android phone, you can do it from iPhone, uh, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Roku, all these devices that connect right into the Netflix service so you can stream TV shows, movies, 
uh, they have a, they have a huge selection, so you can go online and check it out. Um, and if you want to do, you know, maybe 30 days free, something along those lines, if you'd yeah. like to do that, you're welcome to go to netflix.com slash twit and sign up for a 30-day free trial, and you can check out those movies and those TV shows and documentaries. That's what I watch most, actually, on the, the instant streaming. I still have the disc. Yeah, me too. I do. <laughs> I do. Totally. I mean, I d I'm not quite sure if I'm going to keep it, but I still have it. And, I don't think I'm going to keep it. And uh, my um, August billing was August 28th, so I've got it all the way until mm -hmm. September 28th. So yeah. I'm, I'm watching Dexter right now on the on the DVDs because yeah. they took it off streaming. But um, Magnum PI for me. Magnum <laughs> PI for you on yeah. disc. Everybody's watching oh, Magnum PI these disc. days. Whoa. Yep. Yeah, pretty good. So it's, it was on instant for a while, and then they pulled it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's available on disc, and that's what's as soon as that's done, I'll mm -hmm. probably cut the cord on the disc. But I just really only ever watch <laughs> their instant streaming. It's uh, mm -hmm. for for me, it's become ridiculously. It's become a pain for me to get up and put a, a disc in the I know, isn't drive, that which is so ridiculous. It I is, realize as I'm is. saying it, that's strange, but uh, I find enough to watch on the instant streaming. So go check it out. You can check it out for 30 days free. Netflix.com/slash/twit, and we thank Netflix for their support of all about Android and the Twit network. And thanks for having an Android app, too. That's yeah, right. Totally. <laughs> yes. And opening it up to more devices. All right. Without, without further ado, let's jump into the arena. To enter, one lives the Android arena. All right. Well, last week I was not here, but you two were, and you were filling in my shoes. You did a great, great job with my app. Although I probably, I probably would have been a little bit more critical. I just thought the look of lock menu is just kind of, nah. old school. I don't know. Just like having all of the sliders on both sides. Yeah. Like after a while, I realized I wasn't really using many of the other sliders, and it just kind of looks. Uh, it looks kind of hacked. Right. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? It it's kind of got a hacky look, almost yeah. like, oh, well, we figured out how to duplicate the sliders, so we'll just put a bunch of them on the screen or whatever. <laughs> right. But it does the trick. But yeah. I'm happy that you stepped in and, and fought hard for it. <laughs> I think I got two votes in the poll. Yeah. Guess who won? Who well, is not here? And boy, Go Pull Go changed their uh, yeah, they UI did. a little bit. Yeah, um, so uh, Go Pull Go, they added a world map. There's uh, under analytics, nice. you can click on world, so we can see all around the world what people Yay. are voting. There's, there's some we blank were areas, about that last week. That's good. Yeah, Congrats no, they, they to uh, Ron. So they heard us. They heard us, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Congrats to Ron, who wins with Widget Locker, who overwhelmingly took yeah. 280 votes, and everybody yeah. else got about of the votes. 30 votes here and there. You had to know. I mean, Widget Locker, Ooh. going into this arena, we knew Widget Locker is just far and away the one that I hear about the most from people that, yes. that want to change their lock screen. So, And it just does so much stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love how I have Brazil. My 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 uh, my country is Brazil. That's yes, it. That's you it. have Brazil. Thank you. I got one vote you in have Brazil. You have the one vote so in Brazil. I You're right. Win Brazil. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you go Brazil. I want to All visit right. you now. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, this week, as we like to do with the uh, with the all listener feedback episodes, we're doing a grab bag. So it's really up in the air to choose. Juggle, and I think juggle, it's uh, I think it's interesting to see where it landed. It's like one like productivity uh, customization yeah. app yeah. and two games. So this could be an interesting <laughs> vote. So, so one of us is serious. Yes. I know. And the other, <laughs> the other two, two are just like, oh. Yeah, we, one of us doesn't play a whole lot of games these days. Yeah. I, when, you, when I saw what you were going to do, I thought, oh, man, I'm so going to lose. All right, well, I'm just going to throw out a game there, and then I'm going to do oh. something fun. Because your app is really, really cool. I'm just I'm saying that now, even though I don't really use it. I've, uh, I know Gina Trapani has written about it. Uh, it's very, um, it's a very geeky tool, it's I totally think. totally geeky. And um, I'm anxious because I've had this app for a while and I haven't mm -hmm. done anything with it, so I'm ready to learn. Cool. Tell well, me, Jason. Uh, well, let's see. So I downloaded Tasker. Uh, it's a six dollar and forty nine cent app, so it's not an inexpensive app necessarily. Maybe that might price you out. I'm just kidding. Uh, well, I, I'm sure <laughs> I'm that kidding. you know what. I'm sure. That, I'm sure that prices some people out. <laughs> to be honest, there aren't a whole lot of apps that people buy probably over two or three dollars. It seems like they're kind of snacky yeah. things. But this task is a little bit more expensive than that. But mm -hmm. this one does so much. But anyway, it, it does. So so. Um, 
instead of explain tasker i'm going to go ahead and take an email it is the all feedback episode and this was a perfect setup for it cody Weilu writes in and says hi guys i'm looking for an application that will turn up my ringer volume at a specific time and then silence it again later i am in and out of class in college and i frequently miss calls between class because i forget to f the phone is on silent i would love it if there is an app that uh, that could create a schedule for ringer volume um i'm sure there's probably an app that could create that schedule or you could create it yourself with tasker and that's kind of the point um chad i'm going to go ahead and do full screen on this and talk through it so no audio on this but um so i recorded this earlier today so taking this example right i'm creating a new profile with tasker i'm going to name it silent class and I'll create that profile. Now I have to set a context. I'm setting a time context. So say his class is between 11 and noon. So I'm gonna set from 11 to 12 o'clock noon and hit okay. So that's the context. Now I've gotta create a new task that happens when that context is, uh, context is met. Go into audio, find ringer volume, and as you can see, you, there, there's a lot of different settings for everything, but I'll set ringer volume to zero. So when he's in class between 11 and, and noon, ringer volume set to zero. So there we go. Now you can see it in the list, silent class. Um, I also want to set a day uh, because, you know, he's not always in class 11 to 12 every day. So I add another context to that, set day, and I'll set it to Thursday, I believe is what I chose. And if I got this right, that's kind of spooky. Uh, so hit <laughs> OK. And so now 11 to 12 every Thursday, the ringer will be set to zero. But I have to add an exit task. I need to say outside of that, when that is done, what happens? So I add an exit task to it. And I say, when that is done, I'll go into the audio menu here and set the ringer volume up to six. So when it's outside of those times that I specified, my ringer volume will then be switched up to six. And I click the little green arrow down at the bottom of the app, that turns it on, and automatically right then it's kind of refreshes and Tasker's running. And you notice up in the notification bar, I didn't do the timing right when I recorded this, but you see Wi-Fi Home is running right there. Mm -hmm. That's like, because I was at home, I have a profile that detects uh, my location at home, but not using GPS. It okay. detects it based on uh, cell, cell tower location. Mm -hmm. So when I'm at home, it turns on my Wi-Fi. So it's not autom my Wi-Fi isn't on all the time checking signals. It only turns on when I'm near home, and nice. then it finds nice. my lo my Wi-Fi my nice. Wi-Fi. Uh, router at home and connects to that instead that's of data. That's so cool. that's that's kind of a, a quick run through. I also noticed after after creating this that they actually recommend not uh, doing that with your ringer volume because uh, because <laughs> you can kind of mess things up. But there is a silence button, so I'll just kind of show you on here real quick, just as an idea. Um, I have the silent class. And uh, instead of doing the volume, you can go into the into a different menu and find silent mode and turn that on, or turn it to ring, uh, or turn it to vibrate, mm -hmm. or whatever. So, I mean, the thing about Tasker is it's just incredibly powerful. You can set all sorts of contexts, all sorts of profiles. Um, there's there's no limit to what you can do with it. Uh, well, I'm sure there is, but none that I've found. Um, if you want a particular application. Uh, to be the trigger for something to happen. For instance, I had uh, I'd been playing around with the navigation app. One of the most annoying things for me with navigation is I'll load up navigation or I'll do a voice command to navigate somewhere and it launches navigation and then always says, do you want to activate GPS? <laughs> so then I have to go activate GPS and then when I go back, sometimes it doesn't like catch that search that I did yeah. and I have to redo it again. Well, you could set up Tasker so that anytime it launches navigation, it actually has, I guess the fix is you add this like 50 millisecond pause before uh, it launches it, then it relaunches it after 50 milliseconds. And it kind of does that for you and it fixes the problem. Hmm. So, you, so you can get really geeky with it. Uh, yeah. yeah, there was, um, I can't remember where it must have been in the life hacker article but uh, i think it was volume setting mm -hmm. and so uh one um method was if you just turn your phone flip down yes. that will um turn your volume setting like there's a setting and tasker yeah. to do that which i think is very cool mm -hmm. you mean oh so every time i do this put it on the table upside down or or face down the mm -hmm. volume's off well kind Love of it. <laughs> similar to the um the app that we were talking about at the very top of the show the that was you know blasted up into space yes. with <laughs> with the phone 
phone. I mean, your your phone, these these current phones are filled with so many kind of things that are telling it, you know, it, what, what screen orientation is, is mm -hmm. there, you know, GPS, all of these different things that it's drawing from. Tasker essentially allows you to kind of tap into those things and use them as triggers for mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. you want to do. Um, if you... You know, if, if you have Bluetooth in your car, you can set up a tasker task so that when it recognizes that particular Bluetooth in your car, it launches the car, you know, a certain car app and it turns, you know, it, it uh, enables speakerphone or what, whatever you want to do. Really, the, the hardest thing about this app, aside from it, that it takes a little bit of time to kind of understand the flow, I'd say, although that video probably did a good job of of mm -hmm. detailing the flow of it is just that there's almost too many options, right. too many things that you I can know. do with it. You yeah. have to really kind of think about it. But once you understand the flow, it's not that hard. Like I have things that are running all the time. Like one of my favorite recent ones is power brightness. Anytime I plug it into a power source, uh, display brightness goes as bright as possible. Oh, that's cool. Auto brightness turns off and display timeout turns off. Yeah. So it's always as bright as possible when it's plugged to the power source. Um, and then the second I unplug it, auto brightness is back on and that kind of takes over. Uh, things that's like that cool. silent uh, while at twit is essentially uh, when I'm <laughs> near twit's guest Wi-Fi uh -huh. access, it automatically puts silent mode on. Oh, and then when I'm when nice. I'm no longer near without Wi-Fi access, it takes silent mode off and returns it to whatever it was before. So yeah. cool. That's great. Another app I'm gonna need to download. It sounds like this almost it's complicated enough it almost could use some presets or some scripts or something to yeah, say. Yeah, well, and that's actually part of it. Um, <clears throat> oh, you really? can the, you can go to the site. Uh, they have, let's see here, tasker.wiki.com. That's oh, wiki dot spelled out. Tasker.wiki.com. Um, and they actually have step throughs as well as uh, profiles that you can download nice. and load into the app. You can save and load all of your profiles with the app, um, you know, and do just that. I mean, there's a ton of them there. Wow. You can also do it through the app. There is a way, and I can't remember uh, profile data, this button. Uh, import one? No, maybe that wasn't it. I got to it earlier and I wanted to remember. Oh, browse profiles. There we go. And there's a, a few different places through the app that you can browse uh, to profiles uh, directly from the phone and I think save the file onto your dry, onto your, uh, you know, SD card. I and like how some of the these Tasker how to's are noob proof. Yeah. Noob right. proof. Oh, that's me. They are really complicated. <laughs> you read through some of these. I mean, it gets as detailed as um, creating kind of if then comments. Right. Um, right. If they don't have an automatic, you know, automatically a drop down kind of button that you can press that represents the thing you're wanting to do. If you kind of talk its language, you can you can kind of script it um, by hand, but I didn't even go there. <laughs> That's a little outside of my uh, my desire. I, I think something like that, because you can do so many things, is absolutely worth the you know six ninety nine. I think I mean, once you have it, you start to you, you and you'll use you it. You have lot. to justify it before you get it because it's a little expensive, and you're like, oh, well, what would I even do with it? Once you have it, and you kind of do a couple of things just to play around with it, then suddenly it kind of opens up, and you're like, actually, oh. this one thing's been annoying me forever. Yes. I could do this. That display while plugged into power thing always really annoyed me. Yeah. Sometimes it did it, sometimes it didn't. Now it all is always super bright. It's almost so. like home automation. I can see some, yeah. I can mm -hmm. think of some really cool uses for this along with home automation. I get near the door, the door unlocks, yeah, right. Go in. I mean, yeah, right. totally right. You know, well, and you, I'm sure you could do stuff like that, have yeah. it send out uh, messages as well. I haven't thought about that, but uh, so that's it. It's Tasker Android Market, six dollars and forty nine cents. All right, uh, my app because uh, yours was so technical. I went ahead and just had fun with mine, and I'd like to thank Derek Duncan on G Plus for giving me uh, this app today. I wasn't sure there was a couple apps I was going to profile and. Games always win out when we do grab bag shows for me because it's so much fun. Uh, and this has a strange name. Uh, it's called Muffin Night. <laughs> Knight. Knight. Not as in nighttime, but. Oh, Knight. K N I G H T. Yeah, yeah. Of the round um, table. No. You know, I think, Chad, the best thing besides, I'll show a little bit on my phone, but if you scroll down on the page, let's show the YouTube video and their actual gameplay because they're much better than I am. So basically, you are a knight to start off with, and then you start unlocking other players like a zombie, um, like an orc, uh, like a Cylon. Um, 
And you're fighting things. What I love about this game, um, basically you're fighting um, enemies like pigs and frogs and sheep and, um, you know, crazy characters. And as you, as you move up the chain, you unlock, uh, you know, wizards and uh, cra other crazy animals. And at the same time, you have to also grab muffins. <laughs> It's very, if you're not watching visually, it might be kind of crazy to hear. <laughs> and just like the game, just as I'm describing, it's very frenetic. So, um, and, and it can get a little repetitive, but every time you grab a muffin, you grab XP points, which, you know, add, contributes to unlocking other um, worlds and other characters and other levels and other um, uh, levels for your characters. My favorite character is actually the unicorn, and the unicorn itself poops out rainbow, and the rainbow, if the... <laughs> Don't all have, unicorns <laughs> poop out rainbows? <laughs> and when it, when it leaves it there, um, the enemy will explode. Oh, um, cool. What I, I love really like the look about, of it. Yeah, yeah the, nice. the look of it is fan-freaking-tastic. Yeah. It's like, they say it's 2.5D. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that is. But it's really, really simple to play um, and uh, very easy to kind of get into now. I, there, there's boss stages, which I'm, I've only unlocked three different worlds right now. Um, it is crazy, crazy cool. I love this game. And here, I'm going to try and play it myself. So here I am. Oh, I'm the knight. Oh, and I just died. I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so there's your muffin to the left. Here I am as a knight. Um, you have customizable... Um, uh, what do you call these? Like um, buttons. Uh, buttons. Thank you very much. I'm I'm like <laughs> stressing out. Oh, here's the here's the unicorn. So I'm gonna have him poop out right there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh oops. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's like, it's Damn. Like focusing on your Auto -focusing I know. I, now I'm like whenever I play games and yeah, try and talk really about it, it's really difficult. Talk, so yeah. here's a kitten ninja, and they're uh, killing some enemies. And then you jump. You go left and right. Uh, but the key thing here in order to unlock a different character is to grab the muffin. So as soon as I do that, oh crap, and I'm, uh. this is hard to do. As soon as I grab a muffin, a muffin. the character Maddie. changes. So there's the archer who I really like. He's got two arrows. There you go, jumping. I'm, oh, oh, there we oh, go. okay. <laughs> This is going to sound terrible in audio, but um, anyways, it's very visual, very fun, and the graphics are very, very cool. Yeah, uh, it's, it Rebel totally Games. has a 3D look to it. Like, Yeah, like you a, can see the depths yeah. here in the shadows, yeah. right? Um, here, let me show you really quick. Uh, there's other levels. I've only unlocked the forest and the windmill, which is a very difficult level. Um, and then in the settings, you can actually customize your controls, move it around. Oh, wow. Okay, thing. so that's what you meant. Like, yeah. actually reposition them on the screen. You can reposition. So this that's is cool. my uh, like fire that. button and the jump button. I can move those around as yeah. well. That's great. Um, so that's, that's very cool. It's fun. It's cute. The uh, actual um, soundtrack is cute. I, it could get a little repetitive. You can hear do 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 do, but that's okay. Um, that's it's a cute game. Right. Oh, and multiplayer. I haven't even got gotten to multiplayer. The cool thing about this game is it's also uh, released for the iOS uh, platform, so you can play against you know your friends that have um, iPhones, and hopefully you win. Um, and uh, I love the fact that the developer actually released this game at the same time as the iOS version. So kudos that's to cool. them. There I'm oh, gonna that's great. kill yeah. the pig. Um, okay, now who am I going to be? There, I'm a monster. Yay, Yay, you got the muffin. I got the muffin. You are a muffin knight. Okay, and what am I going to do? <laughs> oh, right, the zombie throws up at people. Anyways, it's 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 oh, it's cool. really crazy cool. It's frenetic. It's fun, uh, and I love the graphics. So Thanks. that is Muffin Night. Thanks again to Derek Duncan, and it's two ninety nine in the Android Marketplace right now. Um, it, it's worth it to note that the iOS version is ninety nine cents compared to the Android version at two ninety nine. Um, but I think it's worth every penny. And boy, there's tons of uh, levels to unlock that I haven't I even gotten to yet. I wonder why the price difference. I'd be curious to. Uh, I'm guessing they think Maybe that they're the, going to the sell Android more. overhead. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah, with could all be. the different devices yeah. that they have to make it um, right. totally. uh, compatible for. Yeah. So uh, that's my game. Very cool.
Cool. Awesome. Uh, so I guess we're, it's my turn, right? <clears throat> so I also picked a game. I didn't know what you guys were going to pick, but I picked a game that I've been playing lately. Uh, it could be a popular one. I don't know. There's over 3 million downloads, so maybe it's, maybe it's pretty popular. Uh, but it's called Death Worm. So, you know, while you had the little cutesy uh, yes. characters and stuff, this is very much the opposite. Um, and the cool thing about, that I think anyway about this, is it does have an HD version. Oh, nice. Um, and we can actually play the video on this one, too. It has an HD version, and uh, so if you do have a tablet or something, it'll actually scale up. Um, again, the music's really good, the quality's really good, the gameplay's really good. It actually has hooks into... I love the death worm! Yeah. It has uh, hooks into Xperia, pl Xperia pl Play. Play, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And it reminds so, me of Tremors. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was exactly my thought, too. Uh, you know, the whole reason I, I clicked on this, I saw it, and I'm like, okay, this looks just too ridiculous enough. I've got to just try it. And oh, then after, this is fun. after I started playing it, I'm like, I got totally addicted. So the whole goal of the game is really to eat people and destroy... <laughs> Uh, destroy tanks and, and things, and it's a level system, so, you know, you, for, at first you have to eat 10 people, and then you have to eat 20, and then you have to eat 30 under, you know, within 60 seconds, and um, I'm on a level right now where you have to destroy 15 of those little alien spaceships, and it's virtually impossible. I don't know how I'm going to do it. And then each time you level up, you get a reward, so you get a little upgrade. You either grow the worm bigger, or he gets um, uh, fireballs and uh, this little mode where you can jump really high. So you, each time you level up, you get something cool like that. There's the level up feature. Oh, and so awesome. <clears throat> it's yeah. really fun, and it's very addictive. I mean, you know, I don't know how long it'll last, but um, you, you, you can try it for free, and then after you get past, like, the first couple levels, I think you have to, uh, you have to pay for it. So, and it's only $2.99. Um, there's 45 levels on, you know, in three different maps, and they're adding more as you go. Um, there's a couple mini games. They have several several different modes you can play. A couple mini games, uh, survival mode, um, a bunch of different enemy types. You can see there's people shooting at you. In each level you go up, the shooting gets a little bit more powerful, so it's harder. Um, aliens, <laughs> special forces awesome. coming to get you. Yeah, so it's all kind of it's all kinds of awesome. I think I think it's really a, oh a lot of fun. It like burst very into unique. yeah, like several other worms. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, it's very fun. <laughs> so there's two good. You know, depending on your temperament, there's two really good games to go check out. Yes. If you like to blow things up, um, and uh, you, you know you're kind of into that aggressive mode, uh, you can go get Death Worm. Death well, I, I'm killing stuff too. I'm just That's killing true. pigs. Just and, things that yeah, are fighting are, rainbows. It's more cartoonish. I know. You're I killing know. cute stuff. I know. Isn't it sad? I'm killing sheep and cute pigs and turtles in this thing. I kind of feel bad every once in a while, but then I'm like, I need the muffin. I'm gonna go get it. I think it looks a lot of fun. Yes. Looks like a lot of That's fun. That's awesome. I want both of those games. Yes. <laughs> and I don't play many games, but I'm actually just as a side note, really kind of impressed with the state of of kind of games on Android right Me now. Too. I feel like it's kind of Me coming too. into its own now. Absolutely. And it's been a while. There was a, definitely a time there where there wasn't a whole lot to choose from. Mm -hmm. Right. And now they're just getting very dynamic and, and great to look at and fun to play. Yeah. And Seems people are like making money. Yeah, yeah, that's the key. People are that's making money. Uh, people are making these these fun games, and they're they're getting money from. I and mean, that's why it happens. I yes. mean, unfortunately, a lot of times, not everyone can be, uh, you know, give all their stuff out, and so people are actually buying them. I was really afraid when Android first came out that people were not going to pay for apps, and that would ruin the marketplace, and mm -hmm. then the whole platform would would tank. But you know, hey, three bucks. All I'll it takes is a months. good app, yeah. and that's what's going to get people to to purchase it. And I think our games are uh, compatible with uh, various tablets out there, too. So yes. this would be really fun to play with, yeah. you know, in the Absolutely. bigger screen, 10.1-inch screen, mm -hmm. even a 7. Or a 7.7. .7. Yes. Oh, not in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you can uh, vote for your favorite uh, of these apps that were on today's grab bag. If you go to bit.ly slash poll 21 AAA. We're switching it up because people are getting really like <laughs> they wise know. and they, they figure these URLs out. So yeah. sorry that we're not keeping a regular uh, bit.ly link going here, but we got to, you know, you yeah. guys are really smart. So we got to try and trick you a little bit. Bit.ly slash poll 21 AAA. And you can vote for your favorite between Tasker, Muffin Knight, and Death Worm. <laughs> yes. I love it. Oh, man. I love that Talk these three grab are bag. together because wow. they're all really strong in their own ways. Uh, so that's fantastic. Uh,
Aaron, thank you so much for joining yeah. us. Yeah, absolutely. It's awesome yeah. having you back, and yeah. especially back to back. We really appreciate oh, it. Oh, thanks for having me. This is great. I love talking about Android. So anytime. Right on. Well, we will uh, we will remember that and bring you back <laughs> yet again. Uh, hopefully not next week, though. We'll give you a break. Um, <laughs> go ahead and uh, and plug plug away whatever whatever you want people to know. Sure. So uh, if you want to follow me, you can follow me pretty much Aaron Newcomb anywhere. So Twitter, Facebook. You can add me to your circles in Google Plus. That's typically where I spend most of my time. Uh, but more importantly, if you want to see some of the podcasts I've done, you can go to thesourceshow.org. And I'm working on a new website right now. The old one's pretty uh, old, long in the tooth. Uh, so I'm working on a new website. And uh, so I try to work on that when I can. But definitely go there and check out those uh, uh, video podcasts about making and hacking and open source software. And you can also catch me, of course, on Floss Weekly, right. uh, which I co-host or sometimes host. Uh, but Floss Weekly here on the Twit Network, all about open source software projects. Very cool. Radical. Yep. And how about you, Eileen? Well, I would say I'm on at Eileen TV on Twitter, but I'm very heartbroken that TweetDroid is gone or Aww, will be gone I very didn't realize soon. realize this. Uh, so earlier. I'm having another issue with finding a Twitter client that I like, which, whatever. <laughs> but I'm very active on G+, so just do a search for my name. That's where I'm more active anyways, so maybe the whole TweetDroid thing is for the best. I yeah, no yeah, it was for the best. <laughs> um, I'm at Raygun01 on Twitter, and you can find me on G Google Plus as well. Please do, because I always throw out a lot of Android related questions uh, and you know hopefully integrate those into the show as Jason Howell you can just search for me there uh, but that is it for this week thank you guys uh, yet again for joining us and uh, you can send us a voicemail at 347 show AAA you can send us an email at triple a at twit.tv uh, hit us up on Twitter we have a, a Twitter account for the show at Android show uh, show notes can be found at twit.tv slash AAA. And finally, you can catch us live normally every Monday from 5 to 6 p.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv. So for all of us, have a fantastic long weekend. Hopefully yes. it's long for you as well. And we'll see you guys uh, a week and a few days from now on another edition of it's All About Android. Right? <laughs> Go grill some meat. That's right. Bye. Androids in space.